Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher, and you're watching the Privacy Guides. Uh, this is kind of a status update episode. I haven't published in forever yet again for those of you who have been following the channel for some time. Uh, and as always, that usually means that I am cooking something. I have been wired, and I'm very excited to share a whole bunch of news, I guess, with you. Um, so yeah, how have you been? Let me know in the comments. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, I can tell you that I've been undergoing quite a shift in my mindset. Um, I'll start with this. I mean, the whole channel has been dedicated to one's privacy and security and essentially the lack thereof pretty much everywhere on the internet and in the apps that we're using. Um, and I really started way back with episodes that were pretty mainstream, how to use Firefox for privacy, how to use a password manager, why two-factor authentication is important, and stuff like this. And then I went way down the rabbit hole, self-hosting my own VPN, uh, among a whole bunch of other extremely niche uh, and very time-consuming endeavors. Uh, which I've shared with you, and some of those episodes took hundreds of hours to research. And fast forward two years, um, and what I realized is that very, very, very few people need that level of privacy. Um, and that level of privacy is inherently extremely difficult to implement and sustain over time. It's very inconvenient. Um, and I mean, one could tell that the content that really excited most of you was the more mainstream stuff. The content that excited very few of you was this 100-hour research stuff. Um, and I actually, um, and that's, that's interesting, I actually started not wanting to expense all of that energy and time for that marginal increment of additional privacy. What I mean here before some of you <laughs> run away is that there is really this threshold between, you know, no privacy, full convenience, you know, you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're using Facebook Messenger to talk with your friends and family and everyone else. Um, you don't care about 2FA. So there's like this extreme and there's the other extreme which let's call it with affection the Edward Snowden scheme where um, you're essentially fighting nation state level threat models. Um, and, and although this is incredibly important and I am forever grateful for the people at Tor, for the people at Tails and all the other people at the Electronic Frontier Foundation that are advocating and fighting and developing software for this, um, the truth is very few of us need this. I think it's a fabulous exploration, a fabulous set of skills to understand this. Um, but at the same time, if we move the needle towards convenience, we can reach a point where one has a great level of privacy um, and security without making it one's life uh, adventure to sustain this level. So what I'll be sharing to uh, or sharing with you over the upcoming uh, days, weeks, months is a whole new series of content uh, that will essentially share what I've been doing on my computers um, and what I've been feeling comfortable with these days. Something that I believe is way more sustainable, massively more accessible and strikes a right balance uh, in this landscape. So. Yeah, if you're into this, you are going to have um, a lot of content that will be hopefully insightful coming your way. Now, um, something else uh, in the news is that I have uh, decommissioned or deprecated or for non-nerdy people, pulled the plug on subscriptions. Uh, so some of you were uh, essentially paying a $9 a month subscription on the website. Uh, this here is where it would happen and you could log in. Uh, you could also stream my content from the website away from YouTube um, and have other perks such as discounts, uh, which in all honesty really only applied 
uh, in the store right now for QR Bridge, which pretty much statistically no one really cares about because it's a super niche Edward snowden -y kind of app. Um, so yeah, so I pulled the plug on this. Uh, now, the rationale for this is each additional step of work um, that I need to do in order to publish more content uh, is friction and essentially makes me statistically publish less content. And, and I wanna be able to publish as much as I can. And as I've mentioned many times on the channel, there's a whole bunch of ways to watch YouTube stuff uh, on tour or you know using a VPN uh, or you know you don't need a YouTube account for this. So there's a lot of ways of watching this content. Uh, and, and the truth is 99.999999999% of you are watching this on YouTube. So I decided to pull the plug on this. It also kind of removed pressure for me to have to publish. Um, I did feel uncomfortable not publishing for a month or so because you guys were paying for this. Um, and yeah, so I did pull the plug on this. Um, I mean, some of you had just paid. Uh, if ever you're upset about this, get in touch. And I mean, I can refund it, um, I believe, because I did purge all accounts. Actually, I think I can refund it because for privacy reasons, I just you know deleted all the data from Stripe, something that all companies should do when data is no longer necessary. Um, but yeah, and for those of you who do wish to support my work, uh, the more like the most efficient way, and that's always been the case, is uh, at becoming a supporter essentially and donating. There's this really cool platform called LibraPay that a lot of you use to donate. Uh, and that is a really cool way of donating once or on a recurrent basis. Uh, and if you're into Bitcoin, you can also donate using Bitcoin. So those are really like the two most effective ways of supporting this research and content creation. Um, okay, last piece of news. Um, what have I been up to? So as I said, I've been completely changing my mindset about privacy and security and finding a better place for that needle on the threshold of con convenience to like Edward Snowden level privacy and security. Um, but I have also been obsessed by a problem in the market. Um, okay, we have password managers, we have two-factor authentication, we have all of those kind of operational level ways of managing credentials or secrets. A password is essentially a secret, a 2FA token is a secret. Um, but there's this really fascinating uh, gap, I believe, in the market where a lot of you, uh, maybe not specifically all of you, but a lot of you may be involved with crypto, for instance. Um, and as you may have heard in the news, a lot of crypto exchanges uh, are going bust these days because they started having support for all kinds of altcoins or if you're a Bitcoin maximalist, shit coins. Um, and some of those coins went to hell and that really hurt those exchanges who usually were extremely leveraged with all kinds of financial tools. Um, and anyway, short story is one should always custody our own Bitcoin. That's what I do for those Bitcoin behind the donations or those sats, I should say. Um, and the problem is, how do you back up your seed securely? Um, usually it's a set of 24 words and you put them on a piece of metal or on a piece of paper in clear text, which I always found very, very bad. And to that extent, I created a while back a thing called QR Backup. It was this piece of tech that ran on a Raspberry Pi, allowed one to create encrypted paper backups. That was super cool, but it was, again, in that Edward Snowden-y level where no one has the uh, will to learn everything that's required to pull that off. Uh, and a use case that is even more sensitive, I believe, now that a lot of people are becoming very wealthy with crypto is that no one or very few people are talking about succession planning. So what if you die? Um, so maybe you wanna pass on that or those digital assets to your loved ones. Maybe you wanna donate them to a foundation. Uh, but the truth is it's extremely difficult as a conceptual problem to remain sovereign and in control while one is alive, yet have a mechanism in place to pass on that digital legacy when one passes away. So that can be any form of secrets. It could be 
private keys in the context of crypto. It could be a master password for a password manager, any type of secret. Um, so I am really excited to be developing this business um, where one can essentially create those encrypted paper backups here uh, in a really secure way using an app. So what I'm showing here, uh, this is probably a first, like no one really has seen this except for a handful. This here is an app that can run on Mac OS or it can also run on Tails and eventually we're probably gonna have our own operating system that runs this. The app is called Superbacked and essentially uh, it can be used to generate cryptographically secure mnemonics, BIP39 mnemonics. It can also be used to essentially create passphrases that are very complex, and then they can be hidden behind a passphrase that one knows. So that passphrase is something one has in our mind, uh, for instance. Uh, and then there's a, I, I mean, I'll do a full on demo of this a bit later, but then the backup type can be either regular, so that's 101, but it can also use the Shamir secret sharing algorithm to essentially shard backups uh, and make it so that one can establish a governance scheme. Uh, so for instance, if you die, you may wanna have three out of five of your most trusted friends and a law firm come together and arrive to consensus for those digital assets or secrets that are stored in the backup to be released. Uh, and that is a problem that I haven't seen anyone uh, solving in a operationally safe way. So if you've heard of something like this, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if it's a product that you want uh, to secure your holdings, please get in touch uh, on my website. You'll find, if you click on my little face here, you can you know send me an email. Uh, yeah, get in touch. I mean, I would love to get your feedback. Customer feedback is the best uh, when developing a startup like this. Uh, so yeah, so I'm super excited. I've been uh, essentially developing this minimum viable product uh, or yeah, and, and, and it's something that I am really excited to start showing to the world. And it's a business that I'm hoping to develop. I have to admit, I am like extremely excited about the idea of being in the secret management business. It just sounds so James Bonney. Um, it's a business that requires all of that skill set that I've been developing and sharing with you over the past two years, it's a business that to have it right, it's ridiculously hard. It's not just the app, it really is the whole operational system underlying that app and the whole human layer process to be able to do this in a secure way. Um, it has to do with incentives, it has to do with crypto, uh, cryptography, sorry, it has to do with all kinds of things. So that is what I've been up to. Um, I also acquired a new camera, so I now have two cameras that are identical. I am so pumped to bring all of you in that creative journey of developing that business. And all of the really hard problems underlying that business are also things that I'll be sharing with you um, as I kind of solve each piece of that puzzle leading to this piece of tech that hopefully will put a dent in the landscape and allow people to plan their successions efficiently. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully that was uh, insightful as to why I haven't published in a while and I'll be back to uh, publishing regular content shortly. Bye.